To Thee we come, O Lord, our God. Sisters, let us turn unto the altar of God and confess our sins unto Him and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to offer this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with this authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord commanded the skies above, the doors of heaven he opened. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, though we are unworthy, you have invited us to return to the table of life. Help us to put aside earthly desires so that we may always live in Christ and He in us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, 
the Creator and Redeemer of all the faithful, grant the souls of your faithful departed, handmaidens and servants, for Rose Girardi, for Federico Levandier, and for Janice Corber, forgiveness of their sins. May our devout prayers obtain for them the pardon promised by our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading is a reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. Amen. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your good spirit you bestowed on them to give them understanding. Your mama you did not withhold from their mouths, and you gave them water in their thirst. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger, and then fed you with mana, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel 
Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill on the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer deserved to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because the son of mine was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. These words are taken from today's reading of the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we hear in today's reading of St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the word reconciliation. Reconciliation is defined as the restoration of friendly relations. Other words that are associated with reconciliation are reunifying and reunion. The city of Corinth was a great city, made up of many different classes of people. And there is so much that is contained in the two letters of St. Paul concerning ethics and doctrines that volumes of books have been written. There was also a great epistle that St. Paul wrote, but it, as many other early Christian writings, have been lost to antiquity. Now the church in Corinth had some serious problems. Factions began to develop and divided the church, first by the teaching, between the teachings of St. Paul and then Apollos. Apollos was a gifted preacher in the early Christian community at Corinth and who had left a deep impression on the church. To make things more difficult, there was another faction that began to divide the church in Corinth. On one side, there were those who supported Peter. And on the other side, a group that had their own personal interpretation of the teachings of Jesus Christ. In the end, Apollos left Corinth and refused to come back even after St. Paul reached out to him. What a mess in a Christian community. But it got worse. As these factions grew, so did their bitterness and even hatred to the other members. There also grew in Corinth grave immorality and many even turned to heathen practices. They quarreled and they fought about simple things like offering meat, gifts unto God. And there were even some who made the Lord's Supper a simple common meal. In the end, the household of Chloe reached out to Paul for his help, and Paul sent Timothy, a young pastor. A committee was sent to meet with Paul to discuss their problems, and then Paul sent Titus. How was Paul to resolve all this hostility and division in the church. I am sure after much personal anguish, Paul turned to God in prayer and he wrote these words. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, 
who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. It was not Apollo or Apollos, nor Paul, nor Timothy, nor Titus, who would reconcile that Christian community together, but it was Christ. We see this theme in today's gospel of the prodigal son. In the end, the son who squandered his inheritance on prostitutes and extravagant living went broke and ended up hiring himself out to feed pigs. There was a downward spiral from what he had to what he lost. But the turning point for the prodigal son and for those of that Christian community in Corinth came when they realized that what they had was not what they needed. The prodigal son came to realize that even the pigs that he attended had more to eat than he had. And so this reconciliation would turn him to seek his father out and ask not so much to be reconciled as his son, but being ashamed, he turned to his father and said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. My dear brothers and sisters, it is Paul who wrote that it is Christ who reconciles man back unto God. But before any reconciliation can take place, there is a need to come to a realization that we have all fallen short of the grace of God and that we have all sinned against him and against others. This is why the two commandments of love are so important. Love of God and love of your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus said that it's on these two commandments that the whole law given by Moses and all the sayings of the prophets are dependent upon. My brothers and sisters, that is why when we come to church, we make a true and a humble examination of our conscience. And in that examination of conscience, we say unto our Father, we have sinned against you in heaven and on earth. And we no longer deserve to be called your children, but God forgives the true penitent, those who seek his grace and seek to be reconciled unto him. And so Paul ends with these words. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. There was never any compilation of laws that could fully exonerate and reconcile man unto God, but rather as we gather in this sacred place, we realize that it was the sacrifice 
that Jesus offered himself for all of our sins, both small and large. Like the prodigal son, my brothers and sisters, we all at one time or another have walked in darkness. And I'd like to conclude with words of a great spiritual song. It is called In the Crowd. Like a prodigal son, I wandered in darkness. The clutches of sin, they cling to my soul. My burdens were so heavy, my sins were so many, but when I touched Jesus, he made me whole. I pressed through the crowd, reached out and touched Jesus. The sweet Holy Spirit came into my soul. I knew I had changed. My sins were all forgiven, because when I touched Jesus, he made me whole. Like the woman who tried so many physicians, when she touched Jesus, she was healed on that day. My sickness was different. My sins were so many. When I touched Jesus, he washed them all away. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes Keep to my holy ways.
Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may it add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through these gifts which we offer to you this day, help us to forsake the passing pleasures of life and rather to seek that eternal joy of our home with you. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, look with favor upon the gifts we offer you on behalf of the repose of the souls of your faithful departed children. For Rose Girardi, for Frederico Lavandier, and for Janice Corber, grant that their souls may be united with you in all of eternity through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. He is right to give him and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us and preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life through our observance of this great Lent and of its abstinence you confirm us in all goodness and help to curb our unbridled vices therefore we commemorate the 40 day of fast of your horse son that we may with him give you glory therefore we join with the voices of angels and archangels with all the saints and the entire church and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory repeating on see singingly Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with, and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, 
Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow in their heroic examples, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, O Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you do this. Do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and in joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O Lord, your servants and handmaidens, for Rose Girardi, for Frederico Lavandier, and for Janice Corber, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, 
some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, supported by the help of your mercy. May we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins, and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God, 
Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to eternal life. Amen. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Lord.
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, all loving and forgiving Father, have mercy on us who have shared at your table, renewed by the body and blood of your Son. May we ever be found worthy to be called your children, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our fervent prayers for the souls of our faithful departed, for Rose Girardi, for Frederico La Lavandier, and Janice Corber, and grant that through this holy sacrifice their souls may be cleansed from all earthly transgressions and attain everlasting life through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. tribute of our worship be pleasing to you most holy trinity and grant that the sacrifice which we the unworthy have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty and merciful god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. said I welcome you to church this day and I share with you some of the announcements first of all today we are offering prayers special intentions for the repose of the souls of Rose Girardi offered by son and members of the Girardi family for Frederico Lavandier offered by myself and members of the Lavandier family and also my sister Janice, who died a couple of years ago yesterday, offered by not only myself, but also 
her twin sister, Joy Corber. I do bring to mind that following this morning's Mass, uh, not only the fellowship, but also I'd like to uh, call for a short meeting um, in the parish hall to discuss matters pertaining to our upcoming August 25th gathering. So we, what we'd like to do is share information that we have already uh, found out and to be able to make aware um, of things that we've talked about and also to go forward the next steps um, for our gathering in August. I bring to mind that tomorrow is actually the anniversary of the birth of Bishop Francis Holder, our first bishop, and uh, Holy Mass will be offered. And also I have scheduled at 11 o'clock uh, a choir rehearsal uh, that will take place here in church. Uh, please be aware that on Tuesday I will be traveling to um, my home parish, Holy Mother of the Rosary in Chigabe, for um, a gathering of the Eastern Diocesan Clergy Conference. I will be returning later um, toward the evening. I do bring to mind also on Friday, not only Holy Mass, but also we are scheduled for the third part of Bitter Lamentations, or in Polish we we know that as Gosh Kajale. Next Sunday is Passion Sunday, and you will notice that there will be things a little bit different. All the statues and the, and the crosses, the crucifixes will be covered, because what we uh, do when we enter into what is known as Passion Tide, um, it represents the final two weeks uh, in the life of Jesus prior to his crucifixion. With that also being said, Next Sunday at 4 o'clock, our parish has been called upon to offer the annual Central Signorette uh, meal in the upper room. As you can see, it's a little faded out because I chose to run off the bulletins in the black and white uh, mode, and actually that in the color mode would have appeared in a deeper purple. So please, I would like very much to call upon um, members of our parish. Uh, we're going to have to have a deadline uh, no later than I would say Tuesday or, or Wednesday. Um, it is a very moving uh, ceremony and members of our seniorate along with not only clergy but also others uh, to, to partake in this most special uh, event. I'd like to take the time to, um, to thank Mary Lou Fortier, um, Shirley uh, Mitlitsky Floyd, and Marianne Uchnet for the time that they spent in cleaning not only the parish hall but also the mass propers. It is greatly appreciated. Um, I also wish to thank the men and women of our parish who gathered for the past three weeks making pierogi for the upcoming food and bake sale. That will be taking place on April the 13th. Um, I also have, as I have uh, mentioned to a couple of people this past week, that um, Mr. Edward Farrick had passed, uh, age 92. I've been in contact with his daughter. Uh, the date for his funeral has not been set. And, um, talking with Diane, she's going to call me back tomorrow, but we have tentative uh, funeral uh, to take place at not only Risley's funeral home, but here in church a week from tomorrow. But again, nothing is finalized until I'm able to talk um, with the family. Um, I want to thank um, and to acknowledge the generosity of two of our parishioners who wish to remain anonymous for new outdoor signs that will be used to advertise our upcoming spring food and bake sale. We had the opportunity of looking at the, uh, the, the signs that have been used and uh, one, one way that I could describe it, and it's no reflection upon uh, the work that has been done, but it is kind of ratty and uh, it, they're, they're pretty much uh, in, in rough shape. So again, I thank. Um, the, the generosity. 
Uh, again, I have something about the April 13th uh, food and bake sale. And, uh, and now, please, donations for Easter flowers. Please see Alice Majewski in the back of the church. I'll be down there today. Okay. Pat, thank you. And we will, uh, there are still forms in the back. And um, please, before we know it, Easter is going to be upon us and we need to be able to, to order the flowers. And finally, um, I don't know how many of you had the chance last Monday at 8 o'clock. It was the first part of the mini-series Jesus, His Life. Uh, this coming Monday at 8 o'clock um, will be the second part. And what I like about this is it's more than just a Jeffrey Hunter kind of thing. Not saying that that was not a good, uh, good movie. But there are historians and there are theologians who basically talk about the aspects of Jesus' life. So seriously, if you have the opportunity, it is well worth it. Uh, finally, I want to ask that in your prayers, you remember Frank Skrosky, who I was told today is suffering from pneumonia, and I am going to try to find out where he is so that I can uh, have a, a hospital visitation. Are there any other things that I failed to mention? Guess not. So again, God be with you. Watch over all of you and your loved ones. And may the grace of God be ever before us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for our sick, as well as those who are uh, not capable of being able to come and to worship in our church. We also ask that you would remember in prayer, dear Lord, our prayers for Frank Sprosky. May we join in saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed sisters and, and brother in blessed memory, for Rose Girardi, for Frederico Lavandier, and for Janice Corber, may we join in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.